Hi, James. It's really lovely to see you here today at Service Dealer Awards and Conference. Um, we're really looking forward to your speech shortly, which is entitled The Inside Track, What Farmers Want from a Dealership. So, um, in summary, could you maybe describe what your main frustrations are when it comes to broaching a deal with a supplier and what should suppliers avoid doing? So, uh, my main uh, frustrations when it comes to uh, getting, getting a deal done with a dealer is um, lack of communication. Um, so I want to be sort of regularly kept up to date, uh, make sure everything is uh, you know, presented to me in the, in, the, in the right way so it's easy for me to understand um, and I'm not, I'm not left chasing, chasing them for anything. Yeah, fair enough. And um, what do you think suppliers should look to find out from you when they're getting in touch? So, so for, what really I want a supplier to find out from me before they, before they get in touch is um, or have, I suppose not before they get in touch they need to have an idea about what I want and they perhaps not want to do that until I speak to them but there's no point someone ringing up with no clue about what I'm doing or what my business is um, and that's not to say they, they need to know any specifics just in terms of um, you know the industry that I'm working in so with, with a particular sector so mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're all arable so that's fine they need to be able to talk to me on that level um, there's no point in someone coming in that hasn't got a clue about any of the equipment that, that we're using because it just it, you know, it, it discredits what they're doing yeah, that's fair enough. So, um, without naming any names, can you give an example of your worst experience with a dealership and then also your best experience? No, I'm joking. Um, so, so, probably my worst experience of a dealership has been relatively recently mm -hmm. where we were, where we, it was a dealership quite a distance from where I farm and we were negotiating on a, on a deal and we were, I was looking to buy it. It was a second-hand tractor, but I was looking to buy it. And uh, he was up against another second-hand machine I was looking at and I started talking about the price. And he started off, he was £28,000 different on the deal. Wow. Um, and we sort of chatted for a few minutes and he dropped to three or £4,000. And I said, you know, you're still a long way out. And he immediately then dropped it, so he was £18,000 less than where he started. Gosh. And I just thought, actually, from a price point of view, like, no, no. If, if there was that much money in your deal to start off with, yeah. how, how, can, I, how can I trust that? I, I want someone to come with, with their best price. And be honest about their figures and not do that because I that's just... I, I think you've just said there that trust is really important. And I think I think from um, an industry point of view, it is all about relationships, isn't it? Agriculture, ground care for service dealer. It, it is about the relationships that you build and it is about trust and, and communication, as you say. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and on the flip side, my, my, my best experience with a dealer um, is one that we've been you know working for, with for a long time. Um, and it's probably when they ordered the wrong tractor for me. Um, okay. And it came in. I had to go and work, walk in and say, "That's not. That's not the machine I ordered." Gosh, you know? that's what. And it moment. was only one box that was ticked wrong, but no problems, no hassle at all. Everything was sorted out. New tractor arrived, looked after, and we've still got it. You know, eleven years later. So, you know, it, it's they, they've looked after me, and it, and it is it's a relationship thing. You mm. you want to be able to pick up the phone, talk to someone. If there's a major breakdown, then you that you want you you I expect them to um, sort of look after me. Um, and at the same time, you know, I, I sort of reflect that with, we're still continuing to do business with them. Yeah, fair enough. So um, obviously today's event is just as much for our dealers as it is for the, the customers of the dealers. Um, what do you hope to get out of today's event by being here? Well, I suppose if we go back to what we're talking about in terms of having relationships with dealers, what I'm hoping to get out of, of this event is, is some contacts, chats some people. Um, you know, we're, we're gone of the days where you only ever deal with I certainly find with our local dealer. Mm. Um, you know, it's now not a problem for me to pick the phone up and buy something from North Yorkshire. Uh, you know, it's just it's just not an issue anymore. So mm. to make the contacts here and talk to people, um, I think is should be you know, beneficial to myself. Brilliant. And today we're celebrating um, the 30 years of Service Dealer magazine. Um, and one of the things we're focusing on is the next 30 years. What do you perceive will be the opportunities for suppliers? So for the next 30 years, what I perceive to be opportunity for suppliers, is, is, it's got to be uh, supporting customers through changing times. So we need, we need the dealers to be there to look after us through times when uh, you know, our business is going to be an element of turmoil. So whether that's through good deals or more important through good backup, because mm -hmm. I, I personally feel people will be running uh, machines for longer, not changing as much. So it comes down to the service and the parts department, I think, are going to be key for the next, the next few years. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. I won't keep you because I know lunch is out waiting outside for you. So, um, and don't want to keep a farmer from his lunch. So, thank you so much. Thank really lovely to see you. Um, yeah, enjoy the day. Thank you.